So even though our actors are spending every day in this sea of blue, having to use their imaginations of where they're going to be in the film, they, at least they have been armed with these incredible costumes by our genius you know, costume designer, Liz Palmer, and her team. The, the amount of detail and research that has gone into you know, each thread on these, on these costumes is, is truly incredible. I had to know where they were, the hierarchy of the gods and the symbols that they actually carried with them. And there were certain symbols that I actually stayed away from, um, like the unk. So it's just like um, Hathor, you know, kind of is always sort of seeing carrying an unk, that we stayed away from that, because I kind of like felt that that happened after the gods. And I tried to keep away from a lot of uh, hieroglyphics as well. So ours were more sort of adornments without the Egyptology. I think we've had most fun, to be honest, with some of the, the gods and the, you know, the coronations and some of the background stuff. There's been lots of great fun stuff to play with and, you know, we started, we didn't have a lot of time in the beginning, but as time went on and we did fittings, we got more and more adventurous and bigger and bigger, you know, with the whole idea of the gods being larger than the human beings, you know, we started going, well, let's get bigger and bigger with the hair so we can help them get big and bigger shapes and bigger things and getting to know what the sets and things were going to be because initially you come on and it's all just you walk onto the set and there's just you know blue steps and blue poles and and you go oh it's sort of quite different and then once the artwork starts flowing you sort of realize what's going to be put in later and you start sort of adding all these shapes and things and you you just hope it'll work same yeah. question i'm not saying whether it does or not um i actually do think you're right i think if we could just soften it a little bit more like make it <laughs> But I think it, it does look, cool sound. I think it's a good look. Yeah. Maybe it just needs a bit of heat, a bit yeah. of weight out of it. Feels yeah. a little too yeah. soft. Chucky. If you come yeah. in for a close up, it could be yeah. a little, little thick there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think the hair looks fabulous though. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Hair and makeup is probably doing 75% of my job for me as an actor. It's been absolutely incredible. I mean, the costumes are phenomenal. They, they, the workmanship that's gone into these, uh, these pieces and the way they've realised and they're beautifully crafted. They've, their fabrics, they've actually had their fabrics made. They're not even purchased fabrics and they're bought from Switzerland and shipped over and they're just beautifully made. Everything fits fabulously. Because everything's corseted and boned, you have to sit upright. The, the crown was heavy, so you know I can only move a particular way. It's about that big and it's solid brass and the hair goes up through it and I mean, the changes are phenomenal. Everyone's wigged and, you know, I think Jeffrey rushes five hours in makeup every morning. I, I'm about an hour and a half, which is quite quick, really. And it's just a comprehensive vision from your head down to your toes. Costumes weigh kilos. Most of the films that you do, you, they kind of like, you ride up this, you know, wave and then you kind of like hit a bit of a plateau and you come down a little bit of a lull and then you work your way up again. This one has just been a tsunami. We have not stopped making, we're still making. I finish tomorrow and we are still making. And it's been great to see the actors working with her on sort of giving their own little personal touches to each of their wardrobes and how they could amplify certain elements of them or give their own special touch. Jerry, for example, he wanted a very specific design on, on some of his chest plates and that sort of thing that he felt like expressed who Set was the most. I thought that was just kind of cool. We had him quite highly polished and regal in a strange way. And he brought it down and, you know, dirtied it up and gave it a bit of earth matter. Although, that damn her back in, did you stop doing that? <laughs> I, I mean, I had some, I, I, I had slightly different imagining of, of how they had with set. You know, he's a man from the, the desert. You know, I, I don't want to look so great. I'd rather be in my armor. My armor is half metal, half leather. And I don't mean a bit of metal and a bit of leather. It is metalized leather. She's never actually seen it before. And it's because they wanted metal and I wanted leather. <laughs> and it's kind of like, it's, it's, a, it's just everything about He's another dimension set. He just lives in that different place. When we first did his show and tell, I, I was worried. We had a lot of design set out. We had um, all you know elements and, and some costume pieces to try on. But it was like he was in a, like you know a leather costume dress up shop. And it's just like, can I have that with three teeth? Can I have that in you know red? Can I have? Does this come in blue? And also crocodile skin. So the, 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 the stamping on, on the tree is like crocodile skin and skeletal and t a lot of tooth elements. Just all dangerous and mad. Like a hunter, because he's a hunter. He's a warrior and a hunter. In the end, he, was, he owned his costume. He brought a lot to it. And he, like Jeffrey, are really involved in that process of uh, design. Jeffrey 
you know, we initially started looking at him and what we'd do with him and that sort of grew into like, you know, it's going to have to be a complete bald cap and facial pieces and then the wig and all of that. And, and as he loves getting into that character and the things and, you know, the more we added sort of, it became good. And, and I think, think he looks really good because he doesn't look like Jeffrey Rush, you know, so it's great. He looks like Ra, you know, and he's got all these little sunspots and flicks of gold, you know, that was, you know, we thought they'd come from the sun. And then, you know, the hair, we put strands of gold through the white hair too so that we'd get all, you know, the whole thing so he glowed sort of like the sun. It might have been interesting if, I don't know if we've got a double or whether we could arrange it so that I picked, I picked the cloth up before I've changed. I ended up using two terms. We had monk, character, and almighty. But when Jeffrey came, he brought a third dimension to that. And it was a really a collaboration between Jeffrey and myself and Alex that um, gave us the end product for his character. So he, with the monk, he grabbed that and he, he saw the textiles and how down and earthy they were. So he said, wouldn't it be nice if all of his adornments, like his armbands and cuffs and his collar, his shoes, his belt, and even his crown, were made of papyrus, leather, grass materials, and just a basic bronze and no gold. Then we decided that the crown, everything when he goes to an almighty character, he grows his crown when he puts it on, goes from a very small bronze, old relic of a crown to uh, the beautiful crown that we see him as super rare. And his bracelet grows, becomes gold, the collar becomes golden and grows, and then he armours, so he gets a, a beautiful chest plate and belt, etc. So, and that, that worked really well, and he was really happy. Without the storm, there's no clouds. Sets hunters, riding their pets. Horace is, you know, he's our golden boy, our, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, really a, a, it's such an important god in ancient mythology and in our film, really, that he he had to be this sort of silvery gold colour to him when he transforms from being a man. And Nikolai's colour scheme, in a way, he's, he has beautiful skin, and I'm sure it was enhanced by Leslie in the makeup department. And Lizzie has him in quite a nice leather, masculine breast coat and skirt, and it all kind of fits together really nicely. He was tricky. Out of all the characters, he was the hardest um, hurdle to jump because he had to first be in a coronation, so he was kind of like done up in regal attire. He's got his feathers and his, his long cloak. He looks and he's all golden and, and shiny and, and he's, he's, he's very pleased with himself there. The, the idea, of course, is that you see the wealth, you see the, the privilege, the power. That's what he, what also the costume helps. That's the story the costume helps tell. tell. And in the initial script, in the tomb, there wasn't a change. He kind of like was disheveled. Uh, royal attire, which was hard to transition him through the journey of um, A being a year later, you know, does a god get new clothes? The rest of the story, he, he wears very, a very basic outfit, which is kind of like the god's version of, of going on a, on, a, on a long trek. So to get him looking godlike, for the most of the outfit that the costume is for his hero outfit through the journey, through most of the film, that had to be the key costume for Horace. It had to look tough, it had to look vulnerable, it had to look broken down, it had to go through water, it had to fly, it had to do everything. And in the end, I think we, we nailed it because it en ended up being like a, a leather undergarment of that that he wore to the coronation. So it was good, we just took the bling off and um, it worked. And three, two, one, lift, three, two, one, shoulders. It's making a movie, it's, it's magical. I really don't look like this, and I'm like, please do something. Three hours later, I'm a goddess. Um, so there's a lot of work from you know the, the makeup department, the wardrobe department. They did an amazing and incredible job. With Hathor's character, I wanted to almost create a nude body. Being PG-13, we had to be careful and cover strategic parts of the body. With her, I kind of like, everything was based on like a bodysuit, a nude bodysuit, and we beaded in the strategic places. And the cape was her main god-like element. We developed this cape that we had printed in Switzerland. And it's all beautiful tattoos printed on this cape. The underneath part of the cape fabric is actually printed in copper, real copper. And apparently it's the lightest fabric in the world. It weighs five grams per square meter. So when you lift it with air, it's just like it's in slow motion. So it's very, very wafty. 
So Peter Menzies, who's the DOP, he said that it, it works a treat. So he's very, very happy with the cake. And it did work a treat. We had it specially pleated. And, um, and each of the ends of the cape are like a finger. So when it comes to life, it's like she's caressing, the cape caresses and hypnotizes. So that helps, you know, to have something like this. And Alex likes it, so it's, um, it's, that's what I'm most proud of, is taking you know, something from conception to on the screen.